Have you ever had one of those, hey, wait a minute, moments in your life? Hello and welcome to Sea Life. This is Daryl Chesser. Thanks for joining us again. Today I'm going to continue on uh, another uh, installment where I read from things I've written in the past and um, just things that, well, I just am going to do it because I can. Today's installment is called Isaac Wakes Up, the hey, wait a minute moment. So let's begin. Let's start with, oddly enough, the story of Isaac and Abraham, his dad. And this is in Genesis chapter 20, 22. So let's start. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Okay, let me get you up to speed here real quick. God had spoken to Abraham and he said, I want you to take your son up to the mountain and offer him as a sacrifice. It was a test. God never, ever, ever wants human blood or human sacrifice, ever. This was just a test. This is a trial run to say, wait a second. Now, are you willing to go this far? Are you willing to sacrifice your own son for me? So let's Let's go forward with this. This is, a again, something bigger going on here because God would never require this. This was a test. So Isaac is asking his dad, hey, you know what? I see the altar. I see the fire, uh, the wood, and but I don't see the sacrifice. So uh, wait. Hey, wait a minute. Yes, it was that moment. Uh, hey, wait a minute moment. Let's continue. Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Now, this is one of the most spectacular things in all of the Bible, in all of prophecy. God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. This is magnificent. But let's go on. So the two of them, Isaac and Abraham, went together. They came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order and bound, tied up his son Isaac. Uh, I wonder what that conversation was like. Okay, no, no, just for a minute. Let's pretend. Let's just pretend for a minute. Turn around. Let me tie you up. <clears throat> so he ties him up and... Uh, lays him on the altar, on the wood. And, you know, Isaac's having a lot of this. Wait a minute, what the? Uh-oh, Dad? Dad? Hello? So, Abraham brought his arm back, it says here in the scripture, stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And he's like, about, he's about to come down. And the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, what the, come on. And Abraham said, what, I'm here, here I am. I'm doing what you guys asked me to do. And the angel said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now, I know that you fear God since you have not withhold your son, your only son from me. Abraham didn't withhold his only son from God, the promised son. The son he'd waited, at, by this point, it was 35 years since he believed God when God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless the world through you and through your seed. I'm going to bless the, the whole world. You're heir of the world, Abraham. Abraham believed him, and it was declared by, by God at that point. God said, you're righteous, because he believed God's promise about Jesus Christ. He believed that's righteousness. That is righteousness. Faith in Jesus Christ, in God's word, that is righteousness. 
So Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him in the thicket was a ram caught by its horns. This ram had been coming up the other side of the mountain. The same time Abraham and Isaac were heading up this side, God had already put in place the sacrifice, and it wasn't Isaac. It wasn't Isaac. We know that this ram, now we know this is the representation of Jesus Christ coming to earth and getting caught in the thicket. He purposely in, in put himself in the middle of humanity and put himself there to be the sacrifice, the pure, perfect sacrifice. So Abraham went and he took the ram. He offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of this place, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh, that's the name. The song we used to sing, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. There, there it is. He provided himself a sacrifice. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was provided. God provided himself a sacrifice. Now, it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. In the mountain, in the sides of the north, in the, on the altar, in Jesus Christ, it shall be provided. What? Salvation, healing, provision, protection, eternity, forgiveness of sins, everything. In the mountain of the Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ shed, his body broken and torn apart now. Everything is provided. Let's go. Romans chapter 8, verse 32 says, Since he, the Father in heaven, did not spare his own son for us, you and me, but gave him up for us all, for God so loved the world, you know, won't he also surely give us everything else? What is it that you would spare? What would you hold back? Money or healing? Or protect. What? If you gave us your very son, your only son, you've proven yourself. Oh my gosh, what else? I mean, yeah, God's good for his promise. He's good. His word's good. Let's go on. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus is speaking in the Mount of, uh, of the uh, Sermon on the Mount, is what it's called, but he's declaring, listen, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles, unbelievers, seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, what is his righteousness? What is his righteousness? His righteousness is Jesus Christ. And when you believe Jesus Christ, you believe the word of God, God counts you righteous. And all these things, he said, will be added. Jehovah Jireh, in the house of the Lord, it shall be provided. It shall be provided. Jehovah Jireh, in the house of the Lord, at the, at the place of God's, in the holy of holies, the blood of and the body of Jesus Christ, the lamb slain, slain, the ram caught in the thicket on that mountain. And he saying, no, 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 Abraham. I don't want your flesh. I don't want your son. I've already made provision. I've already provided perfect flesh and the perfect blood for perfected, perfected salvation. All right, let's get in here. Our, heaven, our Father in heaven is pretty thorough. He covered all of the bases with the blood of his son, Christ Jesus. Instead of sacrificing us, he, God, willingly sacrificed his son for us once, for all men, for all time. John 3, 14 through 16 says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting or eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, the ram that came up the other side of the mountain. He gave us his only 
Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Maybe today is the, hey, wait a minute moment in your life. It may appear to be that way. It may be appear, appear to be you're the sacrificial lamb. It may appear to be that you're on the altar. I mean, you hear some preachers and some articles and you read some things and even your own heart and mind, con condemnation comes in and you're going, well, I deserve it. You know, I'm, I did wrong or I wasn't disciplined enough or I wasn't strong enough or I wasn't, you know, quiet enough for long enough to hear him. So, I'm the sacrifice, and I know, you know, pick up my cross. Hey, you're not the sacrifice. You're not the sacrifice. Hey, wait a minute. I'm not the sacrifice? Yeah. That was Isaac's real, hey, wait a minute moment. I'm not the sacrifice. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God provided himself a sacrifice. God had a better idea. God doesn't want your sacrifice. He wanted to sacrifice his own son. It was his good pleasure to do this and to bring us the kingdom, but it was only through the body and the blood of Jesus Christ on that cross and him going to that tomb and him come being resurrected by the Father from that grave to sit at the right hand of the Father. And it is only by faith in that action of God alone, in that body of Jesus Christ alone, in that blood of Jesus Christ alone, in that atoning work, in that completed, finished, absolutely perfect work of God that counts. Your sacrifice doesn't. Hey, wait a minute, what? Yeah, it was his sacrifice, his thoughts, his pleasing the Father, his perfection in the law. It was his sacrifice. It was his being brutalized. It was his being torn apart. It was his going to the cross and his shedding of the blood and his resurrection. That counts. Now, let me read some more. Romans 8, 36 through 39 says, As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. It sure seems like it, doesn't it? We're accounted as sheep for the slaughter. We're the sacrifice. You got me bound up here, it seems like, and and all of a sudden, he comes with the next verse, Paul here, and he says, wait, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Praise God. Praise God. For I am persuaded, it goes on to say, I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels or principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing. Now hear that. Any other man, any other political doctrine, any other demonic doctrine, any other demon, any other sky, moon, stars thing, every poison, every sick, no other created thing, nothing can separate you and me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He loved us enough to send the ram himself. Isaac was smart enough to hop off that altar when the ram showed up. Are we? Jesus showed up. He went to the cross for us instead of us. So we are not the sacrifice. Jesus was and is the only one worthy, the only one worthy. Lamb. So now is a good time to have that, hey, wait a minute moment, realizing Jesus Christ completely pleased our Father for us. Through his cross, through his death, and through his resurrection, Isaac that day walked away a very relieved man a very happy young man. Maybe we should too. The ram went in our place. Let me pray real quick with you. Father, thank you for your kindness. 
for your grace and goodness. We come in Jesus' name today, the perfect Lamb of God that was placed there in place of us, instead of us. He got what we deserved, and now we get what he deserves. As he is, 1 John said, Father, 317, as he is 417, as he is, Christ is today, so are we, you and me, who are in Christ, in this world. Forgiven, whole, healed, redeemed, set free, protection, protected, provision, and joyful. We're not worried about this stuff because we're not on the hot seat. Jesus did it all. Thank you, Father, for that. We rejoice in your love today through Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, let me bless you. For those of you that do not know Jesus Christ, maybe never have received him, uh, the Bible tells us if we believe in our heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead and that we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Let me say it again. If we confess that Jesus Christ is the, is the Lord, that he lived, that he did go to that cross, that he did die, and that we believe in our hearts that God raised us from the dead, we shall be saved. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So call on him today. Jesus, I believe you're my ram. I believe you're my lamb, my sacrifice, who has pleased my heavenly father. And God, thank you that his blood and his sacrifice has forgiven me once for all time, for everything. In Jesus' name, amen.